Welcome back you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Drawing with Mike. Today we're doing something a little bit different. As you see, I'm riding in my truck. <coughs> going to a job remotely. Um, today I'm gonna be doing a mural, starting a mural. Um, I've tried to make this video now. This is be the third time I've tried to make this video because the other two times that I attempted it, whenever I got to the job site, the uh, facility was not prepared for me to start. This kind of happens sometimes in construction, whenever you're working with large corporations and, and not per se individuals. A lot of the communication doesn't happen as efficiently as we would like. <clears throat> Even in this day of modern, people driving crazy. Even in this day of modern um, technology, sometimes the most, one of the most important people in the communication stream doesn't get the information needed, and that would be me. So I left thinking that I had confirmation of the job to start, but um, of course the person on site didn't know that I was coming. So anyway, that being said, the mural is for a company called Florida Hospital. Um, if any of you follow me on social media for any length of time, you know that I've done these murals now since 2000, uh, I believe 2012. So four years, going on four years, five years, might have been 2013. 2012, 2013, you know the, the years are going together now. Anyway, so the mural, it is roughly um, 12 feet by 12 feet, something like that. Um, I got commissioned to do this mural in the kids area of all the new center care facilities that are opening up here in Florida. Um, and I got this job through uh, an existing contact that knew my work from uh, some of the daycares that I had done. I've done murals now for, gosh, since 1999, 1998, just as a side hobby and it's kind of turned into a decent lucrative uh, source of income uh, for freelance. What I like about murals is I can efficiently uh, produce the mural in a short amount of time, roughly 23 to 25 hours. It roughly takes me about three to four days, depending on how far I push it. And the, um, the benefits from it are fantastic. I get to get outside, I get to, I get to draw on walls, something kids love to do. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. Um, the subject matter, uh, since it is Florida Hospital, has a uh, Christian nature to it because Florida Hospital are their seven-day Adventists and they really have a grasp on um, their, uh, their particular doctrine that they follow. So, that being said, the, the mural, as you guys will see, because I'm, I'm taking you along on this one, as you see, um, is basically Jesus um, in a boat and he's floating on the water and uh, there's a ton of animals that are in the water and they've got boo-boos, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, injured in some way and they're coming to Jesus for healing. So the more, not the moral, the overall view of the illustration is, um, and, and the point of it, and especially being in the kids area, is to kind of comfort the kids as they uh, are there, you know. Of course, they could have put up something that doesn't have a lot of character to it. Of course, they could have left it a single color, but that's the kind of company that Florida Hospital is. They they spend that extra dollar, they go that extra mile to comfort their, um, not customers, but their patients, especially children. Um, it's great whenever you get to work with a company that really values uh, not only uh, art, because um, you know, they wanted an artist to do it and they, they, you know, they didn't want to pay somebody to basically put up a piece of vinyl or fabric, which they could have done very easily. And I think they did that before and they just didn't, they didn't like the fact that it was kind of pre-produced and, and they wanted a hand done illustration. And that is very rare in today's market. Sometimes you want a company that wants a, a, a single piece of artwork that is hand done every single time. And what's really cool too about this particular job is you would think that they would want a different mural in every location. However, just because of uh, 
company and, and, and bureaucracy sometimes, it's hard to get everybody to agree on a different illustration every time. So they commissioned me to do one single illustration. I rendered it digitally. I got it approved because it has to go through a, a huge tier of human beings. Um, it didn't have any changes, which is fantastic. And it got all the way up to the president of Florida Hospital and he signed off on it. And what happens is every single time I get called, um, for one of these particular jobs, you know, typically it's a month in advance, you know, three weeks in advance, depending on their schedule. Um, and I go in and I do the same mural at each location. Uh, I try to change it up just slightly every single time, whether it's a different character, whether if it's a different expression, but the, 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 the main focus of the mural is the same. So that being said, I've got my truck full of stuff. If you see behind here, I'm on, uh, I'm on route to the new location opening up um, just outside Central Florida in a city called DeLand. DeLand is an old city um, that has a lot of uh, history to it. Um, and it's got a, a, a school that I believe was established in the 1860s, might have been 1850s, called Stetson University. And Stetson has is, is got a great history to it for music. It's got a great music school. It's got a, a great law school. Um, it is an expensive school. Uh, it's it's not a state-run university like University of Florida or anything like that. But just like any university, um, it uh, you know it's got to make its shareholders and its members money. So <laughs> um, anyway, that being said, the, the, the town is great. It's got an old Florida feel to it. And if anybody anybody if you, anybody has been to Florida, you'll know that Florida has a feel to it. It's not like any other place um, around. A lot of people kind of joke on Florida as being the, um, you know, the elbow of, uh, of a lot of, uh, you know, jokes and, and the elbow of, of the United States because, you know, this is where all the crazy people go to retire. And, and, and in some capacity, that's true. We've had a lot of weird things happen. It's, I've always heard, is it happening, uh, in Florida or is it happening in Germany? <laughs> so, um, that's kind of a funny thing on the internet. Anyway, that being said, we're taking you on route. I'm going to show you guys kind of the materials that I use the process. I don't do murals um, like a lot of other people do. A lot of people will uh, do a projection method. Sorry about the shadow. The sun's in my face. It's early here in the morning. Um, the projection method under the wall and then they'll kind of trace uh, that whole thing or they'll do the grid method which are all valid methods for producing large scale artwork. You know scaling up from something small. I believe in the freeform method. I love sketching. So that being said, I go, boom, I go right to town. I put, I block in my color and then I put in my line work and you guys are going to see the process, um, unfold and, uh, you know, you can see the, the whole process. I use, um, I use acrylic, uh, acrylic paint because acrylic is basically plastic. It's extremely durable. Um, and it lasts because you have to put it in an environment with, with kids that are very rough on the walls. You know, they'll come up. I had a few weeks, not weeks. I had uh, last year one of the kids go up with a crayon. Their parents let them a crayon and just go to town on the mural, man. They just, just colored all over it. And the parents just, oh, I just don't understand. You know, he just loves to paint our walls. You know, he just loves it. And I'm not going to do anything because, you know, my hand's off. I can't do anything to my babies. That being said, they completely annihilated the mural. So I got a phone call. I had to go and I had to restore the mural, which was very easy because of the type of paint I used. That it being plastic, I went in and I just used, you know, soap and water and just boom, I took care of it in like 20 minutes. So that was cool. Didn't damage the mural at all. All the crayon came off, <coughs> came off and uh, everything was hunky doors. Anyway, um, now that I've spoken for about seven and a half to eight minutes and eaten up a lot of my time, um, once we land at the facility, I'll kind of go through the materials as I unload them and kind of give you an overview of exactly what is required to do a mural. Everybody is different. Everybody is going to be um, a little bit, uh, not only different, but just the methodology. Um, this works for me for the time constraint that I have because I have a very narrow window to get this particular job done. And it has to be uh, it has to look good, it has to have depth, it has to have composition, it has to have tons of color. And, um, you know, I don't use cheap acrylic either. I use the top stuff. I use, you know, Windsor & Newton. I use, uh, uh, you know, some of the really high quality uh, acrylic paint that you would see in a studio environment because of the uh, workability, because of the, um, the durability, 
and just the overall color saturation. I, I don't want to have to overlay a color like 25 times for it to really come out. I need to hit it once, I need to hit it fast, and it needs to be, uh, it needs to be correct. That being said, some of the paints, I mean, I probably have $3,000 for the paint that I've got in my truck right now because you know, if I'm doing 14 fluid ounces of paint and I have to do an entire wall, you're looking at it's taking me $50 just to paint one color of the wall. Um, and, and that is something that uh, you know I've tried to really kind of cut corners on and it doesn't work when you cut corners. So anyway, thank you guys and uh, enjoy the whole process. I'm probably gonna do this over the next few days um, and hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy the process. I've been doing Inktober. This is gonna be my sketch today. <laughs> um, you know, it's not easy to do, uh, do an Inktober sketch every day that looks good, um, and I've been trying to do a video along with it. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, made it to the job site. Um, this is the facility uh, that I'll be doing the mural at. Uh, I'm gonna walk out of the kids' area. So if you look behind me, basically this wall right here starts right here, and it goes over to that area, right about there, is where I'm gonna be doing the mural. Um, and I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what uh, materials I'll be using, and we'll go from there. The process, basically, whenever you set up to do a mural, is to examine the surface area. The surface area of this particular wall is okay. Um, it is smooth. It's been sanded, so as far as uh, painting on the surface, I don't think it would be a problem. Um, you don't have to put a base coat down because it looks like there's already been some primer put down, and the surface is good. That's part of the contract whenever you set the contract up. Also. You need to look at your um, overall, examine your facility uh, itself, see if there's a lot of dust or anything, doesn't look too dusty. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm putting down uh, flasking, um, plastic sheeting that goes on the floor that protects it from any drips uh, or anything like that. I'm gonna use this particular kind of tape. This is uh, called frog tape. Frog tape is uh, really good because it's got great edge um, protection whenever you, uh, you know, do edging and stuff like that. Um, Frog Tech is a little bit more expensive. It's about four dollars, three to four dollars per uh, roll. So you got to kind of budget that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the sheeting out, and then I'm going to use a large canvas drop cloth. Canvas drop cloth. Um, I like the big ones, and I like the heavy ones. This one's six. It says ten ounce, six by nine. So hopefully, I don't know, six foot by nine foot. So hopefully, it'll be fine. But this, um, this particular cloth is good because again, it soaks up, you know, that's your final layer of protection, but that's kind of the, um, the initial, and I can reuse this as much as I want. Okay, so I've laid down the uh, initial um, tarp area to protect the floor. Um, as you see, I've got some areas where I've done some additional taping and stuff like that. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go to the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and mask off the edges as well. And um, you'll see here in a second that I'm gonna use some probably 12 inch paper as well to uh, do some additional protection. So there, are, you know, in case there's any splatters or any accidents. Okay, so in the final, one of the final uh, processes in prep uh, for the floor is if there's ever carpet involved and you know you're gonna be walking over a surface uh, any number of times is to go ahead and put paper down because what happens, even if you don't realize it, you're gonna get paint on the bottom of your shoes. And if you get paint on the bottom of your shoes and you walk across carpet, what's going what's gonna to happen is pretty bad. Um, you know, you have to have the carpet cleaned or you have to have the carpet replaced. And in this construction environment, you're going to see a lot of stuff that, you know, happens, but you don't want to be part of something that messes up the house that you're working in. So that being said, always prep for, I hate to say it, for the worst, but you want to make sure and take care of the facilities that you are in. I went ahead and moved everything in um, to my area. Um, basically, <clears throat> what I do is I put stuff in these big bins. It's pretty easy to transport. I've got things streamlined down to a point where that's my airbrush stuff. So if you look in here, I've got a ton of airbrush paint and equipment and, and water filters and stuff like that. I typically use, um, as far as equipment, equipment goes, I've got maybe four or five airbrushes. Pache makes a great line of airbrushes um, called the Eagle um, or the Eagle Talon, and this is a great, um, a great airbrush. It's pretty cheap. It's about sixty bucks. I think I've got three or four of these, and I've got uh, an Awada 
<coughs> an HPC that's pretty good. I use Gravity Feed because um, I can change out the colors really quick. Um, and I use uh, Cretix colors, Cretix colors, and I like using um, opaque because it colors really well. And if I want to do any layering or anything like that, then I use um, uh, translucent. Um, fluorescent paints are really good too to bring out uh, color effects and stuff like that. So this is really good. These are all water based. They clean up really easy. Um, of course, I got my trusty Surface Pro for reference. And then, whenever you open this up, I've got a myriad of just junk. <laughs> I hate to say junk because it's not really junk. Um, it's all useful stuff, but I'll show you guys later what these are used for. These are a lifesaver. Uh, Oil-based Sharpie um, paint markers. These are fantastic. They've got different thicknesses. This is the medium um, to wide, but these are fantastic for doing line work. Um, and I'll show you guys uh, you know, near the end where that's gonna come into effect. Um, as far as paint goes, I've got a lot of paint. Like I said, I've got probably two to three thousand dollars worth of paint that I've used. Um, this is kind of the Liquitex. Liquitex is absolutely phenomenal. Um, these are about $15 a tube, which is kind of expensive, but at the end of the day, you want the best durable paint that you can utilize. And also, depending on sales, because I shop at different places, I also use Windsor & Newton uh, Gallery Acrylic. And again, this is you know permanent, and this is fantastic paint. Um, again, expensive, about $12 to $13 a tube. So, you know, 200 milliliters, 6.5 ounces. So it's expensive, almost $3 an ounce. So, um, you know, of course I've got some, some flow promoters and, and, and stuff like that. But just, you know, basic painting supplies, your tape. Here's frog tape, that's what I was talking about. Fantastic. You know, the blue line's great, but if you use uh, frog tape, it's got this paint block technology and it has a great release and it's really good for you. So, of course, your palettes, you know, cheap palettes. I go cheap because I throw these away. I don't reuse any of these. Uh, well, I say that, but I don't use anything. This is wood, and I just did a little mixing on this one. I'll probably end up throwing this one away, too. <clears throat> you know, everything's kind of disposable within the context of, um, you know, what I'm doing and, and how much it costs. Okay, you guys, so that pretty much wraps up the prep. Um, roughly took me, I don't know, an hour. I usually budget for hour and a half for prep. Um, you can never do too much prep because what happens inadvertently if you don't prep, you will make a mistake. <laughs> and I have made a mistake. Um, I've had an airbrush explode and spray black paint on the wall that I had to come back and I had to repaint and had to scrape and they had to scrape it off the window. So it's never good if you ever get an email after you've finished a mural and it says basically, you know, you, uh, you know, you have paint on the walls. <laughs> um, so anyway, here is all my prep. Got my flashing done, got my base done down here. Um, got that wall done. So I know this isn't really exciting right now, um, but for those of you who are interested in doing murals, it's very important that you get the entire picture because a lot of people have a lot of, how do I say, um, misgivings about what it really takes to get a mural done um, in an efficient time and to make it cost effective. Um, you know, there's materials involved, there's time involved, there's travel involved. There's a lot of things that you don't really realize that are going to end up affecting you in a way that you aren't prepared for. So I've done this long enough to understand that there are variables, you know, variables in construction, variables in material costs, variables in, um, you know, facilities. I, I once had to do a mural in a 106 degree room heat. And because the air conditioning wasn't uh, it wasn't prepared and it was during the summer so these are things that you know you have to think about that are going to affect you in a certain way um, what else uh, so basically what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm, I'm in just a second I'm gonna show you what the mural is going to look like um, and I'm gonna show you the digital illustration of what it uh, you know I reference whenever I do the mural I block currently on this day I'm gonna block three colors two, three, basically three colors. And, and I put it on thick because that is the base coat and that has to be the base to which all the other paint's gonna lay on top of. And unfortunately, it takes 24 hours for it to dry to the point where I can draw on it. Now, of course, in about two hours, three hours, I could probably start drawing, but the problem being is some places will be dry, some places will not be dry. It dries at different times. This is an air conditioning environment. So, 
That being said, I like to give it 24 hours to cure, and then I hammer it hard on the second day. Okay. okay. Here is what the digital illustration looks like. This is the actual digital illustration that I submitted for um, approval whenever I went to go and get these jobs. Um, this particular illustration took me, I don't know, uh, it didn't take me too long, but it, it gets the, the vision across. So basically it shows Jesus, um, you know, going out on the water. He, and, and if you look, the animals have little bandages on them. You know, the big octopus down below, they have the fun turtle. You know, they got little boo-boos on them and they're all coming and they're all really happy. So they're all happy to be in, in the presence uh, uh, of Jesus. And he's putting out his hand and basically saying, I'm here to heal you. And that's kind of the message that they conveyed. They didn't really give me a lot of direction. Um, whenever they gave me this particular job, they just said, we want Jesus in a boat. <laughs> and this is what I came up with. So which is yeah. really cool. here is a picture of one of the murals that I did. I think this one is in Tampa. Um, I'm not really sure, but this is uh, an actual mural. You see I've changed things a little bit, sizing, um, but the overall piece and the spirit of the piece is there. There's a lot of things that you can do inside the digital world that you can't do in the traditional world. But that being said, this is, I mean, this thing is 12 feet high by nine, you know, 10 feet wide. So I think the color saturation is pretty good. Um, uh, again, each time I do one of these things, and this guy has a little bit of mumps, but each time I do one of these things, I try and change things up just a little bit, add some kind of extra detail, add some kind of extra oomph to kind of push it over the edge and really bring to life the, um, you know, the animals. I love doing animals. I love doing animals traditionally. I love doing animals digitally. I love doing character animals. I love doing uh, realistic looking animals. Um, you know, and again, each one is just a little bit different. So, which is good because, you know, you don't want to have monotony. You know, sometimes I'll change the color of this little guy. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll change his shell or that plant. But you can't change it too much because in the context of the approval process, they approved a particular illustration. They need to see that. So within that confines of that, I always have to, you know, be creative within those confines, you know. Um, you know, I put panels in the boat, some little highlights, some little glow, reflective light here and there. So anyway, that is what I'm striving for. So I can't wait to let you guys watch the process. Okay, so basically I blocked in the top portion of the um, color base. Um, I'm moving on to the other two color layers. Um, I use, like I said, I use acrylic and, and we're doing traditional. Basically I'm throwing uh, a buttload of acry acrylic into a, a tray, utilizing these cheap spreaders. Um, you know the rollers unfortunately you know I kind of chinsed out this time I don't want to say chintz because I got that particular roller actually I did I chinsed I went to big lots and I got that particular roller and as you see it's just a little bit too wide for the base which is kind of ridiculous but anyway so I'm gonna be cleaning out my brush here in just a second because I'm gonna be transitioning into a different color but I like to have three water buckets one to take the bulk of the uh, acrylic out the second to kind of rinse a general rinse and the third is a wrap up. Um, you can go four buckets if you like, but I like these because they're like three dollars um, at Lowe's, and you can get them. Um, you know, sometimes they're on sale. But I would get one free, and, and you know they're disposable if you don't want to carry them around. I've had these particular box uh, buckets for a while. So anyway, um, and I w I tried to do time lapse. Unfortunately, I don't have a wide angle lens in my suction cup. They don't have the windows yet in, so I can't put it where I usually put it to let you guys see the process. Um, but uh, anyway, you see kind of the progression. This didn't take too long, probably uh, an hour, maybe 45 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes. So, um, moving on. Okay, you guys, so stage one is complete. I just put paint on my nose? No. Stage one being the base coat of the blue tones for the ocean, the sky, um, and the undersea world that will be the mural. So basically, here it is. This is the... Oh, the th uh, tones of blue that I utilize um, for the mural. Didn't take too long. Um, what time is it? It is almost noon. I started around nine o'clock. It's gonna take 12 hours, basically 12 to 15 hours for this paint to completely cure so I can draw on it. Right now, if I were to go up to it and start drawing on it, you can see the sheen of the different 
drying in the thicknesses and trust me it would not go so well. that being said that's day one um pretty easy uh tomorrow whenever i come back i'll block in the characters using um regular color pencil you know i've i've done a lot of experimentation with different type of writing and drawing utensils on the surface and for me color pencil price evaluation they're about a dollar 99 a piece i go through about 10 of them per mural um i mean you really can't beat it they're wax based um but the acrylic just goes right over them there's no resistance at all and at the end of the day um you might see a little bit of scraggly line here and there but what that does is it adds to the overall liveliness of the drawing you can actually see somebody drew it instead of you know used like a stencil or something like that um what i did want to show you guys uh is basically um that the painting process at this particular stage isn't extremely refined it's not like perfect the lines aren't perfect and since it is an undersea ocean and above ocean environment you need to have that variable of how do i say uh, happy accidents, similar to what Bob Ross used to say. You know, your little happy accidents here and there that give the painting its life. If you sit there and stress over all the little details and stuff uh, about the drawing, and especially on the base coat, then you're going to end up, uh, it, it, it'll take way too long, and, and, your, and your cost evaluation and, and base will be way out of whack, and you'll stress over stuff that you don't really need to. So have fun. That's the biggest thing. Have fun with the drawing. Have fun with the mural. You know, these aren't my primary source of income at all. You know, these are fun. This is fun for me. I love coming out. I love drawing on uh, walls. I love just enjoying myself. I put my headphones on and other mural artists will probably corroborate, you know, what I'm saying is the fact that murals are fun. You should have lots of fun with them. Um, that being said, I did have sort of a little uh, accident and, and this is something that is completely normal. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys and here. Amongst me painting and doing stuff and having fun, look what landed on the side. Exactly what I was talking about. Um, you know, good thing this particular wall is going to be repainted, but if not, that would be a problem. You know, you always wanna prepare for um, the variables that you can, you can predict. You know, that's something I could predict. I did my best to give 12 to 13 inches of leeway in case there was a splatter, but you know what, that happens. I'm not gonna stress about it, especially since the wall's gonna be repainted. Um, anyway, thank you guys once again for coming to the channel. Um, over the next few days, uh, I will be sprinkling in some Inktober stuff as well. Um, the best that I can, I've got a lot of work to do, a lot of digital stuff um, as well. Uh, I'll try to put the Inktober in and amongst in there somewhere, but uh, this is kind of gonna be the primary for the next few days. Um, so you guys can kind of see the process. So thanks again, you guys, and we'll see you soon.